On the channel, we talk a lot about having a good shot, better movement, and improving your decision making. But today I want to break down positioning and properly approaching a gunfight. And I really wanted to break this down for you guys because I think it can help a lot of you struggling with how to approach a gunfight as well as regaining positioning, reapproaching the fight, what to do if things don't go your way. So with that said, let's get on the roll with it. Now, while we're dropping here, I do want to cover why positioning and approaching a gunfight. Why is it important? It's important because if you approach the gunfight, more effectively in a strategic way should i say you can win a gunfight if someone's better than you it's just that simple they can have a better shot they can have better movement but when it comes down to it the person that's more prepared is going to win the gunfight majority of the time so right here i landed market by myself my team's a little bit far behind me end up getting a blue armor which is awesome very clutch here and i got my weapon combo that i'm going to use throughout the entire game r99 and volt to rock and dual subs here we go i got a path right in front of me Looking to deal the damage before I push. Beautiful shots on him. He's about 20 to 30 HP, but he does have a teammate. I get hit with a PK, so I zone him out. What that thermite's going to do, actually, that thermite is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to zone him out, so they're not going to push from that my right side where I'm currently standing. It won't push from this way unless they run through the thermite. Number two, it's going to cause a lot of audio distortion. They're not going to know where I am, what I'm doing, if I'm healing, and that's going to be big for me, especially when I'm not by my team. You know, they're sort of rotating over, but right now I am definitely solo in this fight. And I know there's two guaranteed. I have one very low. I don't have the best positioning here, but my approach was very good. Path ends up pushing me. That's an easy cleanup. He was originally weakened. Phase up. This is where I get better positioning now. Go round back, climb up, and now I have height on the wraith. Drop down, catch off guard. That's beautiful. Two down, looking for one. And I'm not going to rush anything. You know, I'm just playing me. And that was a prediction there. I didn't necessarily hear this caustic. I just predicted he was going to be there. My movement was good. He's not going to expect me rounding the corner in a quick fashion like that when you're knee sliding, which is very good. So that's a nice, quick, clean squad wipe. And this is why I love landing at market. Because look at this. Watch this, we get an easy knock there, and a literally one bullet kill there. So anyone that lands at the three-stack sweaty building, which is to my left from the positioning that I'm at right now, they're crazy for going there. Number one, you're not going to get any loot. If you do, you get lucky, basically. So over there, it's always a gamble if you're going to survive or not. And most times when you're playing, everyone lands there at first, but then they scatter out. They're weak. They scatter out around these buildings over here. They scatter towards the tunnel where I'm at, and you got free picks three easy kills for you there you go literally did about 50 damage and i got two kills right there so that's awesome and shout out to my teammate the valk she pinged the purple armor because she knew i got the kill but i only did one damage to her so she gave me the armor swap that's respectable get tagged up now watch what i do here i phase back and wrap around because i don't want to get sandwiched i know there's a team by the sweaty building i'm getting shot up by the res beacon right there i'm in between both of the teams so i'm going to reposition here definitely crank a bat full heal and try and cycle my way back so i can clear this out and then we can work on to the next squad team goes down i can't really see what that fuse all going on there it's a tough angle valk ends up getting the knock there though that's beautiful and it looks to be... Was that a solo? I doubt it. If it's a solo, I mean, it is what it is. So here we go. Here's the uh, sweaty building push. That's the team I was talking about earlier. I didn't want to get sandwiched with that team and the team by the res beacon. Did the initial damage. Now I'm pushing up. There's traps everywhere. I'm like, is somebody blocking this door? I opened it. It wasn't even opening. So my teammate goes down. Pick up a race. She was pretty low. And the last one was also very low. So it's a good squad right, right there. Uh, unfortunately, both my teammates went down. So we do have to get sort of a full reset going, which is going to waste a lot of time here. None of the loot boxes had much of anything. So I'm looking to get involved in this next gunfight. 
instead of just running directly in there watch how i play this right i could have ran right down the street entered this building entered over here i'm not gonna do that you know why because look at their positioning they're on highway they're in the building they have way better positioning than me so even if i have a better shot let's say i beam one possibly knock one they have teammates they can clean me up right there then i'm gonna have to phase back heal i'm just gonna be in shambles look to obtain good positioning before you approach the fight i want to put out the damage here put out the damage here and then push up i do have a portal though so that's going to be clutch so i can port from this building to this general vicinity and then i have a safety net i can back up if i do get fried So in terms of damage, I'm not doing like, heavy damage right now. I'm not doing anything that's sendable. My path goes down. That's unfortunate. So I'm going to pour it in. Make the fight messy. Make it in their face. Make the enemies nervous. Right now, I'm sort of watching the cross so they don't push my team. I find one down there. Poor path. Yeah, I, I didn't knock that guy. So that gas hits me. So there's definitely going to be a caustic around. And look at this. This caustic was pre-aiming this way because he knew his trap went off on the bottom. But in this building, you can climb up from the side walls to get to each different floor. And that's exactly what I did. I did it to number one, avoid traps because I don't know where these traps are going to be. And number two, it's just more unpredictable. When you approach a gunfight, you want to try and take unordinary routes. Routes that people wouldn't normally pre-aim. They would have to turn, then shoot. So their reaction time needs to be on point to get damage out on you or to possibly knock you. So making sure you're taking unpredictable routes is key when you're approaching a gunfight. That's two down looking for one on that team. We still got the other team member on highway. There they are. Lifeline gets lit up. I go for the repeat because I did the better the exchange. End up knocking her. But now look at Sheila. Throwing down the damage. I'm not peeking that way ever again. No chance. Oh, here's where I got bamboozled. I could not find him for the life of me. Uh, then I realized... He was in the building. That's the person right there. That's a failed TP for that Loba. We're sitting with 10 kills. Look at how much damage I have. 10 kills with 1,300 damage. This game, I think it was the lowest damage game for the amount of kills I've ever gotten in my entire life of playing Apex. So we still have the team on highway, uh, but there is one teammate down from that team, I believe. If not, that means they got the res and my teammate didn't clean up the kill. So I'm making a really risky play right now, but I needed the loot. I needed the ammo. Got the bats, got the ammo. I'm off the scene. Now I'm looking to approach this gunfight right in front of me. Beautiful shots on the lifeline. I'm so upset to knock her there. So right here, I have three people in front of me. Two of them are behind this wall lurking around. Lit up the lifeline. She's about 40 to 30 HP. Is it sendable? Potentially. But I have my teammate that went down, so... Right now, I know I'm not going to get any support from my team if, I, God forbid, I make one mistake in this fight right here, pushing this. So I'm going to do the damage and sit pretty. I don't need to force it yet. Not yet, because it's not in my favor. Plus, I got a heal. That lifeline did some damage on me. It shots on her part. I'm going to go for that same approach on the balcony, because I did a lot of damage last time I did this approach. And I haven't done it in a while, so. There it is. 50 on blue. Almost stuck with the arc. That would have been clean. Okay, so here we go. This guy's very low. I have my team for support now. So now if I push, they're not all going to be focusing me. That's what I mean when not having your team there on the scene. Is because your team can be used as bait. Since they're on the scene now, they're going to be a distraction for these other enemies to look at. So I can make a safe push on this octane here that I lit up. Now it's the right time to approach and push the fight. Before it wasn't. I had a teammate that went down. I had to heal. Caught him healing. That's beautiful. Look at this cross. 
across from this. So I, I knew she was going to round this corner here, going to tap the Octane to res. So what I do, making sure I'm reloaded behind cover before peeking. Done. Peek. Fry. Over. Another squad wipe. So we're off on the rotation, making our way finally out of Fragment. We've been stuck there for a while, but for good reason. Got a bunch of kills to our name, a lot of action, a lot of chain fights, which is why I love Apex. That's one of the best feelings. I even tweeted about it. When you chain fight multiple teams at a time, it is so fun. Squad after squad after squad. As long as you can hold it down, you'll be good to go and you're going to have an awesome time playing. So we're rotating over to, it looks like Train here. That's why I love having Valks on my team. I'm quick. I, I get my loot and I'm out. Um, if they're not with me, I'm just going to poke around, pepper the teams. If I get a knock, then potentially push. You know, if I came up on a squad by myself. But yeah, I'm not going to wait. And luckily, I have Valk. She can uh, bring them over really quickly, which is nice. There you go. Four squads left. Here's some shots going down in train. So there's a lot of shots going down over here. Okay, it's definitely two teams. Could be all three teams here. There's a couple ways you can approach this fight. Number one being, I know they're going to be in these little tunnels on top. Everyone loves camping up there because why not? It's a very dominant positioning. People have to take the rope. If they're not a mobility based character, you can't really get up on these things very easily. But there is a secret. If you climb up on here, then climb up on here, you're on this roof. You can actually jump and catch these ropes. You can catch this zip line going to that one. You can catch this zip line going to that one. So that's an option. I can do that potentially. Another option could be just poking around, seeing if I can get some nice picks because they're going to be weak. There's no shot that all of these players are going to be full 200 HP or basically should I say full health and armor. If they're fighting for this long since I've been running through that highway that I just came out of. These guys are going to be weak. So lurk around the sides, play your cover, look for poke shots. That's exactly what I do actually. I was thinking about climbing up and taking the rope though. immediately take height and my teammate pings behind me i'm like wait what are you talking about because i didn't see anyone when i was crossing turns out there's a revenant here get yeah, beautiful shots on him but then i get fried from my back get cracked so what i'm looking to do here since i got the knock on this guy i'm gonna run up real quickly thirst him and get the shield swap immediately okay because if i take a bat first of all i would have to climb up over this wall then take a bat they probably could be pushing from my right side regardless so that's a risky situation there uh, there's not really much cover on this highway. I would have to cross the highway on the left side, climb up, then take the bat. I do have phase, but let's say I wasn't playing Wraith or a character that can get out very easily. It's a different situation. So this move that I'm doing here would be used for any character. Any character that you're playing, this is a solid choice. Go up, finish the kill, get a quick armor swap, and definitely improve on your armor swap speed. So if you guys haven't adjusted your cursor menu speed in your settings, try cranking that up a little bit. That's going to definitely help you get your armor swaps much quicker. This guy was right in front of me. Got it quick. That guy's low. And I have a beautiful angle. Look at this angle right here. Rampart has no cover whatsoever. I have a head glitch right here. And you guys always ask about what is a head glitch. A head glitch is when you can see somebody, but they can barely see you. So they can probably see you from chest level and above. It's going to be more difficult for them to hit the shots on you than it is vice versa. That guy was just praying for the best, hoping he can survive. Not like that. <laughs> oh, here's actually a mistake that I did. I'll let it play out real quick, okay? So I get poor, very poor shots on this lifeline here that I padded over. I knew she was going to pad over. That's why I started dancing around, strafing around. Because I was waiting until she dropped. Because when you drop from a jump pad when you're way up in the air, you get a stun effect. Unless you're playing Horizon. So I was going to wait till she dropped, then start shooting, which is exactly what I did. However, here she goes. She's in the air. Dance the ground. Wait till she dropped, then to shoot. I'm not going to shoot when she's in the air because the tracking is very difficult like that. I'm going to waste a lot of ammo doing that. And I'm not going to put out as much damage as I wanted to. So I did it at the perfect time here. I just choked my shots. But if I wanted to play it really safe, as soon as I took that bat, I knew she was going to drop right here. This positioning right here would have been a beautiful angle for me to take. And get definitely the better of the exchange instead of me being wide in the open here. So my approach to this fight specifically was not the best. This would have been the better choice since I have a nice little head glitch. I can crouch around. I can dance around here. And it's going to be very tough for her to hit the shots on me. But I 
you know, take the fight without cover. And that's my loss there. Port phase quicker than activating your normal phase. And I got to take it back here. I believe my teammate knocked one. Yep, Valk knocked one. Now looking for two players. And I guess she killed the other one. And the other one was weak. And that's a beautiful game there. But I want you guys to pay attention to the stat board. Because this was out of the ordinary. There's multiple things that was very weird about this game. Number one weird thing about this game. Look at the time it took for us to end the game. Just shy of 11 minutes. Games typically last... Uh, I would say on average about 14 to 15 minutes. So this was a very quick game, number one. It wasn't a high damage game because my kills were, again, not necessarily raw for my teammates. Look at this, four kills with 800, one kill with 500. That's typical for the amount of kills to damage ratio. But I got this many kills because I played my approach to the gunfights very well, played Fragment very well. Playing the borders of Fragment, again, you don't want to land at that three stack building. Everyone that goes there is just praying that they get a gun and survive. Most times it's a 50-50 and you're gonna be finding yourself leaving that building looking for more loot. So when you land outside of that building, get the loot, take some fights there, then start pushing in. It's just the best of both worlds that way. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned a thing or two in this video. If you did, a like rating is always appreciated. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And as always, this was Sultan D. I'm signing off. Peace.